Uh, Landon, good morning to you, and thanks for joining us. Talking some Domino's Pizza. Uh, really interested to see what you at like Folio are, are tracking with this one because this is one that's performed very strong as a stock uh, being tied to the stay at home trade being uh, talked about. Obviously, we know it's, it's moves forward and advancing technology, uh, but I'm willing to see, you know, are people actually ordering pizza or are they ordering other things? Yeah, great question. And yeah, this Domino's has done really, really well. Um, you know, the, the, um, Low in, I think, March, the COVID low of March was actually higher than the low in February. And it's just been going up ever since. It's just, I think, about $10 off of all-time highs, uh, over $400 per share. Uh, really doing well for investors. Domino is extremely strong. And, you know, obviously, you, you force people to stay at home. You say you can't go out to eat or you make going to the grocery a little bit less appealing. Um, then you're going to come up with different solutions. And one of those is getting things delivered. And of course, for the longest time, if you're getting food delivered for a meal, it was pizza. And we've talked about this a lot on the show that, of course, you're going to start seeing a lot of different other types of food being delivered. So one of the things we looked at for this segment was, well, how does pizza delivery compare to food delivery overall? And what we found is that when you look at a year over year basis, uh, pizza delivery is up about 45 uh, percent. But just generic food delivery, you know, you're talking about Grubhub, Uber Eats, um, any of those. You're talking about 160% increase year over year. So yes, absolutely, people are getting pizza delivered more and more, but they're getting food in general delivered at an even greater rate. So it makes me wonder what's going to happen when things go back to normal. Uh, is pizza going to continue to lag that? And if the entire food delivery comes down, will that make pizza suffer overall? Uh, one of the phenomena that we saw is that um, during the week weekdays, Pizza's doing really well for just average meals, but they're struggling on the weekends and at late at night. So um, I think that's definitely a concern. Obviously, short term, fantastic for all the pizza companies, Domino's included. But long term, it does make me a little more concerned that people are looking for other options when it comes to food delivery besides just pizza. Landon, walk our viewers through how you guys look at a situation like this, because what you're really talking about is legacy delivery companies, right? Someone that, a company that has been delivering since day one, which is the pizza industry, versus a whole restaurant and food industry that's just getting into uh, delivery. So the growth numbers, they, you know, they better favor the new companies because they, they, they all started it you know, at or close to zero. So, you know, I think it sounds to my naked ear like 40% growth in, in Domino's Pizza sounds pretty impressive because they all, they've been delivering food forever. Tell me, tell me where I'm wrong or what I'm missing there. No, I think you, I think you've got it right overall. You're right. Percentage increase, you know, a year ago, not, not very many people were, were doing just general food delivery and pizza, people have been getting pizza delivered forever. Uh, so a big increase is nice. It's just that huge lag that we're concerned about. And if you look at this chart, uh, you can see that there's been a big pull off in Domino's specifically over the last couple of months. We actually compared this to Pizza Hut and Papa John's. Uh, Papa John's largely flat over the last month or two. Uh, Pizza Hut actually up over the last month or two. So Domino's is actually suffering. This may be due to the fact that Domino's is a little bit more tech heavy and they like to have their own app. They, like, they don't like to be in all the, the food delivery apps, uh, whereas the other two are a little bit more open-minded. And so if you open up Grubhub, Uber Eats, uh, or the rest, you're going to see a lot of options, including Pizza Hut and Papa John's. You may not see Domino. So it's a more of a which one am I going to pick right now kind of situation. Um, also, you know, just a side note, we've got baseball starting in a week or two. And um, that could actually impact things very well for pizza because you know, sports, staying at home, watching sports, having people over and getting pizza is just sort of an American icon. It happens a lot and there haven't been any sports. Um, thankfully for the pizza companies, all this COVID mess happened after the peaks in uh, around Super Bowl, which is absolutely huge for them. And summer actually is a normal drop off. You can see it in the charts. July is sort of the low point for the year uh, for Domino's and it has been for many, many years. It's just that this July is even lower. Maybe that'll change as baseball starts to pick up and people have something to, to watch and maybe order some pizza. But uh, right now it's a little concerning 
stock at all-time highs. I'm a little bit skeptical uh, of the valuation here for Domino's. Landon, as I look at this chart, and maybe I'm looking at it wrong, it, it almost looks like these two lines are moving in the opposite direction. It looks like I'm seeing the Domino's purchase intent slowly but surely working lower. Yet I look at the mention or the uh, not the mentions count, but the stock price, which has you know moved up sizably over the past few years and really over the last year. And so to me, uh, as more and more competition enters the market, as you know, more and more uh, health conscious diets and, and things kind of take over. And we know that those are, are always kind of the trending topics. Uh, pizza usually doesn't favor well uh, during those times and, and for those trends. And then I look at the, the fact that, you know, when you look at something like, uh, you know, Domino's Pizza and, and these other, you know, legacy chain companies, you know, if it's been kind of a slowly but surely grinding lower uh, in a time where these trends hadn't really taken off, isn't it a concern now that, you know, every single restaurant has built out the capabilities to facilitate delivery in a way that keeps their product quality high because they've had to to keep their doors open? Isn't that, you know, a high risk for a company like Domino's and its peers? I think so, especially when you're talking about a company trading basically at all time highs. Um, and, you know, if we've been pretty bullish on Domino's for the last maybe six or seven years. I mean, the data has been unbelievable, but over the last year or so, it started to slide, it started to go sideways, and now it's actually falling off a little bit. Uh, like you mentioned, I think that, you know, for, there's a lot of reasons that pizza goes down in July. It's probably because people are putting on swimsuits for the first time and maybe they want to get a little healthier. Uh, but there's a lot of reasons and it is just, it's concerning that it's, you know, pizza is down a little bit overall, but when you look at the three companies that we're talking about, Pizza Hut, Papa John's, and Domino's, Domino's is doing the worst of those three over the last 30 or 60 days. So that has me concerned. Uh, now, again, that's more of a long-term situation because when you look at analyst expectations, I believe they're expecting just a very slight drop, 1.5% quarter-over-quarter revenue. Um, our purchase intent is negative 2% quarter over quarter. So we're right in line. I think they're going to hit their number. Um, we're concerned about the current quarter's pace. We've got it at about negative 13 or 14 percent quarter over quarter. Uh, so this is a longer term sort of concern with Domino's. I think it's valued a little too high here. Um, it's not necessarily an earnings play. I believe they report tomorrow morning. Um, so it's we're kind of neutral on them for earnings. But I think long term, you know, if they pop up on earnings, um, I think that most likely I'd be taking a bearish position over the long term. And, and Kevin, I want to bring you in this conversation as well here. We know that this stock can move sharply on earnings. I mean, just, uh, you know, two earnings cycles ago, we saw this stock jump from, you know, under 300 to 375 or so. And so what what do you see as, uh, you know, possibilities? Obviously, if they beat or miss sizably in one way or another, that could be uh, room for volatility. But with the stock at all time highs, at least on a closing basis, if we were to close here, if they just meet those expectations, which are a little bit soft, is that potential for volatility to the downside? You got to think, you know, I mean, you know, as we sit on this show and go over dominoes and fast market, you can't ignore the like folio data. It's pretty ominous in terms of the drop-off the all you know my, my my question for Landon is one last question is how does Domino's compare Com correct me if I'm wrong are they the lowest price point of the three names that you're you're comparing because it seems like Domino's pizza they cost like eight bucks right and they deliver them really fast and they seem relatively efficient and they market you know, like crazy. So are they the cheapest price point? I'm relatively sure that the other two, uh, you were talking about Pizza Hut and Papa John's, they're, uh, they have higher price points, right? So it's just, uh, uh, you got to think that if this, the, you know, these numbers miss that there's going to be volatility just like you saw when they hit in that move. So uh, I'm just interested in the other overall metrics in, in, in terms of their price point in Domino's. 
You know, I'm not the guy to ask on price. I seem like every time I try to order pizza, it's I get on there for a deal where it's like two larges for like eight bucks, and somehow I get out of there spending forty five dollars. So they do a good job of getting yes. in the door and spending more. I'm not sure who really is the cheapest, but uh, you know, when you look at consumer happiness, they're pretty much about the same across the board, all three companies. Um, so I don't know about price. I know that Domino's tastes fantastic. Huge improvement over what they were ten or fifteen years ago. Major, major turnaround in this company. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, investors from 10 or 15 years ago have to be absolutely thrilled right now. Uh, very fantastic. So uh, we're happy about that. Yeah. But um, just again, it's it's more of a long term play that I'm just not sold on this company. Um, earnings play, I'm, I'm a kind of on the sidelines, but uh, long term, I have a little bit of concern uh, just because if things go back to normal, then, you know, Pizza delivery may come back down and food delivery may take over. And so far, Domino's has been the weakest of the three. So really, this may be a bit of a COVID play. Do you think that lockdowns are going to continue for many, many months? Mm-hmm. If so, pizza is going to keep doing great. I mean, people will continue to deliver. If you think the lockdowns are maybe going to end and restaurants are going to open, uh, then I think that pizza is in a bad spot right now, especially yeah. Domino's. We're showing it to be the weakest of those three.